Hello, I am Ralph Keeney. My main interest and expertise concerns helping decision makers make better decisions. My most recent book called Give Yourself a Nudge has several practical ideas that anyone can use to improve their decisions. Each bit of information that you gather to help make a decision is potential nudge to improve that decision. My presentation today is one in the faculty series on LinkedIn, done every Wednesday at 1230 Eastern time. After my talk and beginning right now, you can put in questions that I would be willing to an answer. Over the past decades, psychologists and behavioral scientists have identified numerous problems all of us make in our decisions. Recognizing this situation, that there are so many shortcomings in individuals' decisions, behavioral economists have created ways to use those defaults such that we end up making better decisions than we otherwise would have, particularly led by Richard Thaler and co-author Cass Sunstein, they wrote the book Nudge. A nudge is a slight change in the presentation of a decision, which causes the individuals who must make their decisions to make it more in their interest. That idea has become extremely popular, picked up by numerous governments and uh, many organizations which also use it to help people make better decisions. For this, you need an architect called a choice architect who presents the problem. And the situation for most of the decisions you face is there is nobody to present the problem to you so that you view it in a way that you make a better choice. You're the only person who can do that and that's what the idea is here about. How can you give yourself a nudge to make better decisions? There are essentially three key steps for this that anyone can do. You want to define your decision clearly. <clears throat> you want to identify all the objectives you have for that decision. And you want to create better alternatives than those that are available. I think of these as the front end of decision making and often we don't spend much time there. We jump in and we try to solve the problem we have with the decision right away. So defining your decision, the first step. Suppose that your car broke down. You could say, well, seems not to run and I gotta do something. That's a terrible statement of a decision problem. What is it you need to do? Figure out what the problem was? figure out where to get it fixed, whether to get it fixed, figure out should you junk this car and maybe purchase a used car or a new car, or should you even maybe go carless, meaning not owning a car, rent one when you really need it and use other transportation. To help avoid things like this and just bring clarity really, you wanna begin the decision statement with the word decide, typically followed by how, when, whether, and if. Something like that really makes it much better. Second step, you don't wanna take the first decision statement you have for your decision and try to solve it. Create a couple alternative statements. If you clarify the decision better, you'll solve it much better. Third, don't accept a decision statement necessarily that's imposed upon you. If somebody comes to you and says, what would you like to do this weekend, A or B? You might want to think of what decision you want to face, and it's maybe better decide what I would like to do this weekend. That may include A and B, and maybe some other alternatives, some that may even be better for the person who proposed the situation to you. And the fourth thing you want to do is avoid a decision statement such as, shall I take this year off from university during coronavirus or not? The reason that's a pretty inferior statement is the not alternative is not clear at all. 
It could mean any of thousands of things. So a better statement would be decide how to most productively and enjoyably use my coming year for my life. The second key step is identifying your objectives. Your objective state what it is you want to achieve in any decision. And how could you possibly make a good decision if you don't know what you want to achieve? It's a simple example. Suppose somebody important in your field is visiting your town. And what you do is you think, maybe I could have dinner with them and you propose it. You'd like to get to know them and they accept. And so you find a restaurant that's great, excellent food, local cuisine, and near the hotel. The person comes to town, you pick them up, you go to dinner, and the evening is a disaster. The restaurant was way too noisy. You could not have a good talk. You don't really know them very well. It was a wasted opportunity. Had you thought of one additional objective, I would like to have a quiet restaurant or I would like to have a quality discussion and include that in creating your alternatives and choosing a restaurant, you never would have chosen that restaurant. And two, you probably would have created much better alternatives and had a much more productive night. That one objective that you created is an important nudge to make a much more uh, informed and better decision. Now what happens for important decisions, we have a very difficult time, we meaning humans, listing all the objectives. And an interesting experiment on this relevant to perhaps uh, many listeners is what are your objectives of your internship in the years between an MBA? And some years ago, when I was in the sciences group at Fuqua with Kurt Carlson and Sam Bond, we did an experiment on this with all the students in an MBA program. It wasn't Fuqua's. Had the opportunity to speak at another university, and everybody had to fill out a lot of information beforehand. We asked everybody what their objective in the first year, what their objectives were of their internship. Then we stimulated them with some ideas to do a better job getting more objectives. And then we showed them a list of what we thought was a complete set of objectives that may be relevant to them, some of those objectives, and asked them to check the ones that they thought were relevant. And we had them then match up the objectives. Their statements might have been different, but we said, which one of the ones in our list were the ones you had? A quick summary, when they were asked to write down all their objectives, they wrote on average six. When we then stimulated them after telling them we were sure they missed key objectives, the best ones ended up with about 10 or 11 total. And when we showed them the list to use, 21 objectives on average were chosen. They missed 50% of their objectives. And you might think, well, they got all the important ones. They just missed some non-important ones. We later in that asked them to prioritize their objectives. And the objectives they identified on their own were no better and no worse, almost identical to those that they totally missed. So to create a better set of objectives is important. And there are tools to do this to help you. The key thing is you want to start with your values. And a value means anything you care about regarding a decision. It's more general than an objective, but an objective is also a value because, of course, you care about it. People are more willing to write anything they care about down and just say, if you care about it, it's important. And then there's that's the first step make a list. Second is to stimulate thoughts on that. You can give them. Say, are there any emotions or feelings you have about this decision that matter? And then why do you care about them? How do they matter? Think of a hypothetical alternative that's great. What's great about it? 
That would indicate a value. Also, what's terrible about it? That would indicate a value. So there's many, many things to stimulate values. Third, ask other people. They might have some suggestions for objectives for you. Don't ask them right away because they, you will anchor on their ideas and not expand your mind. But you can do it after you've done your thinking. And then fourth, a key thing is with each value there, you can say, why does this matter? Or how could I do things better on it? That will lead you to more and more values. Once you've got a pretty complete set of values, then you can state them as objectives, which is a simple way you want it. An objective is a verb followed by an object. Obvious ones, many are obvious. Somebody says profits is important to my decision. Value is profits. Well, it's maximize profits, verb, object. If somebody says the environment, the objective might be minimize impact on the environment, but that's often a little too general. It might be minimize the impact on a particular species in a particular location. And of course, there could be multiple objectives that help define that specific one concern of the environment. That way gets you a good set of uh, your objectives. And creating alternatives is the next step. Allocating time to create alternatives is very important, and yet often it's not done. People just want to jump in and solve the decision that they're facing. If you create one alternative better than the ones you're considering, that's a very significant nudge to make a better decision. If you create one alternative better than maybe three or four of the alternatives that you are considering, and you're clear about it being better, you can eliminate all of those inferior alternatives so you won't end up having to choose one of those, which does happen many, many times. Uh, often creating alternatives is simply a missed step. And uh, stopping looking for one, after looking for one alternative is very common. People just want, when they don't have, know what alternative to choose or have any, they search. And if they find one that, that's good enough, only good enough, they're satisfied. And one that I've seen literally hundreds of times is looking for a dissertation topic. One of the most, the most important decision I'd say that doctoral students have. They can, and it's understandable you know, you come in, you don't know what you could write your dissertation on, and that's a big problem. And a lot of people think about it. One, you should write down your objectives of your dissertation. I've asked many people at, and so often they have the objective, get a doctorate. Well, every dissertation gives you a doctorate. You want to be more specific. There are many, many objectives, like can I publish articles off of it? Will it help me professionally? I want to learn things. I want it to be enjoyable. Those are going to help stimulate potential topics. But uh, once you have one alternative, many people will choose it if that is good enough for a dissertation. Terrible decision to choose at that stage. You want to at least create three or four more because it's such a crucial decision. And you know there are thousands of topics out there. And if you have one alternative and create three more, there's probably roughly a 75% chance one of those three is better than the one you have. And so to give an example that I think is very important that puts these three parts together, it's a story that happened a couple of years ago. A gentleman came up to me in Washington, DC, and he said, I'd like to thank you for having an impact on my family, a, a significant impact. I said, wow, that's nice. He said, I said, how did that happen? He said, well, it's something you wrote that I read. He said, let me tell you the story. And he said, a few years ago, his wife got cancer and it was very uh, severe. And for a couple years, 
she was in the hospital more or less all the time. There were three daughters at this time, they were eight, 10 and 12. And so everybody was just stuck around home and it certainly wasn't a pleasant time. He said, fortunately, about a year ago, things started getting a lot better. And uh, my wife suggested that I should take the three kids on a vacation because we just hadn't been anywhere. And we usually went to uh, the coast of Maine and spent two weeks prior to that cancer. And so we thought we'd go there, but he read that I'd written that people even eight, 10 and 12 years old have preferences and they can state values, things that they care about regarding a decision. And they were excited about this. So we asked them and he put down his values. They came up with things like would be interesting. I'd learn something new and see something different. It would be fun. And most important, it would be great telling mom about it. Then they created alternatives. The main alternative was certainly there. Uh, the main meaning the state of main alternative on the water. They wanted water vacations. Florida, the Gulf Coast of the US, Southern California, and uh, Northwestern US in the Washington area. They chose the Washington area. And he said, we went there. We had a great time. We did learn an awful lot, experience a lot. It really was enjoyable for the kids. And most important, we called home every day and the kids mainly, but I also reported on the day's vacation. He said, it turned out that my wife essentially had a vacation on that too. And he said, and since that time, not because of it, of course, but things have continued to get much, much better. And next year, the whole family is going to take a vacation out to the Pacific Northwest. Now, there's a case where you had all the three steps being clear about the decision, not uh, go to the state of Maine and where you went before or not go, but create a bunch of alternatives where you'd like to spend the vacation. And then they got the objectives, which I listed, and a set of alternatives. And then if, if you do those well, you're way better off than with many decisions that you end up facing. And so let me basically summarize those three points. The first one is you want a clear statement of the decision problem that you're facing. Second, you definitely want to articulate all the objectives that matter to you. And third, you use those objectives to create the alternatives that you want to consider. You can go through that by taking one objective at a time and ask what type of alternative might be a good one for this objective. And then you look at pairs of the alternatives and you kind of combine thinking that you did on the single ones to create alternatives that are good on each of them. And that's how you stimulate your thinking to get much better alternatives. Why does it make sense to begin with values? Because the only thing you care about is achieving your objectives. That's why you make your decisions. Your objectives are the particular way to state your values. So it's only natural to use those values to create alternatives. The general thinking is think outside of the box. That's true, it's good advice, but outside of the box is everywhere. It's a phenomenally large place to look. I think it's better to think inside of a much larger box, which I call the right size box. And that right size box is defined by the set of objectives you have for your decision. So I'm certainly happy to uh, consider any uh, questions that anybody has or have another point I can mention too. So I'm welcome to take those at this time. Let me. Uh, there's a question about objectives, uh, values for decisions that are personal decisions versus business decisions. 
uh, the way to go about them is literally the same. And first of all, the, the reason is the thinking element is a human mind. There is no group mind. There's no business mind. So you can get objectives for a business decision, which I've done a great deal of. I resigned from MIT to work 10 years uh, in a consulting firm and really learn how important decisions are made, like where to put the nuclear waste or where to build a major dam. And should we develop this new high-tech product, et cetera. And the objectives have to come from somebody. So you interview each of the people about what might be relevant values to this particular decision. Because if you get a larger list of values and then collectively the group gets together, they can agree on the values or not agree. Hopefully they can narrow things down and agree as they do on many cases. But the situation is you start with values from individuals. And so the process is exactly the same as getting them from yourself. And I've done that for strategic objectives of many firms where you interviewed people in different divisions, different places, and you ask them, what do you think your firm should be achieving? What's crucial there? And usually people don't disagree with a lot of the objectives pointed out by others. Where any disagreement might occur is relatively how important they are, but that can come later. Having them identified is, is crucial, obviously. Now, let's see if there's a, another question here. If there are. Gotta read it, sorry. Uh, what if you have multiple decisions to make at once? or which appear to be present at once as top priorities. Uh, sometimes they go together, the decisions, and you need to really view them in the larger sense of coupled, because one influences the other and vice versa. But in other cases, I think there are different strategies. There's not a correct way to do it. I mean, you could address what you think is the most important decision, of those, but on the other hand, if a second important decision was significant and you thought you could solve that readily easily, you might think it's that would make dealing with the more important decision, once I've solved the, the second one, an easier thing to do. So I don't think there's anything specific about that. There may be some guidance if you're not sure of which one to deal with by rough indication statement of what's the decision. And two, what are the objectives? Because they might give you some hint about that. Another question, how and when do you engage stakeholders in the process? I think the key thing is at the beginning. When I first started doing consulting, stakeholders engagement meant a bunch of people decided what they would do at a company or the government, and then they'd go tell the stakeholders what they were doing and why. Certainly, I didn't think that was a good idea then, and I don't think it's a good idea now. What you want to do is engage them early because you're going to create much, much better alternatives. I mean, there are cases where I know uh, there's a river that has salmon on it, and uh, Native Americans or indigenous groups in Canada are upstream from that and they don't want a dam on the river that upsets the salmon, which is key to their lives. And so they were very articulate in clarifying that objective, and that was really considered properly. And what happened is they created an alternative where they didn't run the dams for two months, for three months, when that would affect the salmons much more but they could run it the rest of the nine months and they could store water and roughly get the same amount of power out of it and electricity, some of which was used by that group. By doing it that way, knowing what the objectives are, you do have a reasonable chance to come up with better alternatives that better deal with all the issues. And I might just mention one other point 
that's a key thing. Think for decision making. Who should be making your decisions? It's not a trick question. You should. So who should be choosing the decisions you need to face? You should more often than you do. Often the decisions that come to you are due to the actions of others or circumstance. If you get sick, it's due to circumstance, you need to deal with it. If uh, somebody runs into your car and it's damaged, you need to deal with it and somebody else caused that problem for you. Problems aren't what you want. The word goes with decision because they are problems. And when those problems happen, the quality of your life basically drops a tiny bit. And what you wanna do by solving that problem is improve it and get it back to where it was, but your life doesn't improve. A decision opportunity is a decision that you decide to face that no one chooses for you. So your life didn't get worse by, choos worse by choosing to face it. You choose it because you think of what would make my life better? Or what would make the life of some people I care about better? Or my family? What would make my school career more easily or more worthwhile? Addressing that problem and figuring out alternatives will really improve the quality of your life. And that's the only way to do it. And one quick thing on that, some decision opportunities you choose can mean you don't face terrible decision problems in the future. One of the best examples of that I know to illustrate it is suppose most people, I'm certainly one of them, could get more fit and more healthy. If you choose to do that, those are decisions you made and of course you need to execute. And hopefully that will occur. If you do that, you might not be facing a decision like decision problem. Where do I get my triple bypass surgery in two weeks? You might still face such a problem, but that might not occur. 20 years from now or 40 years from now. And that would certainly be great. Now you never know what you avoided, but that would be crucial. So I think I should probably conclude and say that uh, next week at this time, uh, the Fuqua faculty series will have marketing professor Allison Cheney give a presentation of her work dealing with uh, the research that she addresses. Sorry, I don't have the title with me at this second. And I wanna thank you each very, very much for your time. And I'd be happy to hear from you at keeneyatduke.edu uh, if you had any other thing that I could be helpful with. Thank you very much. It's certainly a pleasure to be on the program.